Okay, it's been a couple days since we finished the LAB and uh, we we put extra sugar in it after we decanted it and it's uh, we're storing it in the fridge. So um, it's still a little foam around the outside, but basically it's pretty much settled down. So what we're gonna do today, now that our weather has kind of improved a bit, we had a little bit of rain, so this kind of put a little bit of a delay on this, but we have a crab apple tree, I think I alluded to this earlier in, in our front yard, that is um, really been struck by rust just about every year. And we've been trying to bring it back uh, to a level of health. We've been using Jadam microorganism solution, uh, drench soil drenches on it. And uh, now that the blossoming is finished for the season, it had excellent blossoms this year, um, we're going to uh, treat the foliage during this period of time where, where the tree will be putting on new growth and at the same time the weather kind of is also favoring um, rust and things of that nature because we tend to have cooler nights and warmer days. So what we're going to be doing is making a solution um, that is going to combine FPJ. Uh, this is oriental or herbal nutrient. We mixed up some of it. And um, brown, not brown rice vinegar. We don't have access to brown rice vinegar uh, because of the pandemic, but we do have access to um, raw uh, apple cider uh, vinegar. This is Bragg's, and we're going to be using this as a substitute. And also LAV. This is some LAV we made uh, a month or two ago and uh, it's still really uh, good to go. Now, one of the things that can help you out is, is you know, getting the dilution ratios correct um, on what you're supposed to be putting in. So in k &F, at least as it, it's been kind of practiced from the Hawaiian uh, folks who were trained by Master Cho, um, the uh, vinegar and their use of brown rice vinegar, in this case, we're using apple cider, um, the Oriental Herbal Nutrient, OHN, and the FPJ are kind of a base for um, a, in the routine uh, foliar applications that are given to plants, particularly during their growth vegetative and their changeover period when they're making fruit. Um, these things are what's called the maintenance solution. And the dilution ratios are, are, are pretty constant. You're going to dilute... Um, the FPJ and the vinegar at the same ratio of one part of each of these to 500 parts water. And the OHN, depending on its age, um, you're going to dilute this uh, 1 to 1,000 or maybe even um, a little bit more dilution. So somewhere like 1 to 1,500. If it's older than six months, because OHN tends to get stronger as time goes forward. So we're gonna be diluting this today. This, this OHN, um, the individual components we've mixed together here are, are a year old, so they're um, pretty potent. So we're gonna be putting the OHN at a pretty high dilution level of one to 1500. And that um, is gonna be our maintenance solution that we'll use on a spray uh, every probably around a 10 day rotation for this tree for the period now we're in May and we'll do it till probably right around uh, 4th of July or maybe a little bit later. In addition to that, we are going to be adding our LAB. And LAB is going to be at a 1 to 1,000. So it's one part of this to 1,000 parts of water. So this is really pretty powerful stuff. So that's why the dilution levels are fairly low, or I should say high, actually. The amounts we're putting in are fairly low. Uh, so when you look at it and say, well, what does that mean if I'm mixing a gallon? Okay, so the way to look at it is if you're mixing a gallon of solution, you're gonna have eight milliliters of this, which is the equivalent of a teaspoon and a half, um, you're going to have a teaspoon and a half or eight milliliters of the FPJ. And in this case, we're probably going to use about three quarters, 
think of if I got this right. They, it would normally be four mil, four milliliters, which is <clears throat> a little less than, um, it's somewhere between three quarters and a teaspoon, uh, would be normal for um, the OHN. But since this OHN is older and we're gonna go to a one to five, uh, 1500 dilution, we're gonna use this at a half a teaspoon of OHN per gallon. The LAB is at a one to 1000. And so what that means is we would be using um, four milliliters of this, which would be approximately three quarters of a teaspoon. So that's kind of the, what it is, three quarters teaspoon LAB, half teaspoon of our OHN, and, and then a teaspoon and a half of each of these guys. And that uh, should get us uh, what we need to mix in per gallon. Now I have a three gallon backpack sprayer that I'll be using uh, to spray the tree. So I'm gonna pre-mix these guys up. I'm gonna add the LAB separately once I add the water, but you can mix these three guys together, the FPJ, OHN, and the vinegar together. And so when you look at it and say, you know, um, how do you figure out how much to put in, particularly maybe you don't have a gallon sprayer, but you've got a, a, a a metric sprayer, you know, it's in liters, that's gonna be a lot easier. And one of the things that y'all might wanna look at is on Google Play, and I think, uh, I'm not sure on the Apple side, but there is a uh, an app called Diluting Calc. So Diluting Calc can really help you, although this is in metric, um, you can easily, you know, convert it once you know what the amount is. So as an example, if you have a thousand uh, milliliter solution, diluted solution, and you say, I wanna do a one to 500 um, dilution rate, that's the factor, one part of your, you know, whatever it is you're using to 500 parts water, well, how much would you have to have of the solution you're trying to dilute? And it'll tell you, two milliliters would give you a one to 500 which makes sense because a one to 1,000 is one milliliter per thousand milliliters, right? So anyway, this is a great tool to, you know, figure out your dilution rates, you know, so if you get kind of confused and you know that this something's gotta be one to 1,000, but I've got a two and a half gallon sprayer, or I only wanna make a gallon of the material or, or a half gallon or whatever it is, you can use this calculator to kind of help you out. So I just kind of wanted to show, it. it's called Diluting Calc, We'll put a link down into the show notes and you can find the, the app. It's, it's free and uh, works great. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make up our maintenance solution. And we are gonna be making uh, enough for a three gallon uh, batch, which, okay, so our FPJ uh, per gallon, we need eight milliliters or in this case, so for three gallons, we need 24 milliliters. Now, one of the things, conversion for milliliters, if you're most you know, new, like teaspoon measurements, tablespoon measurements, they also kind of give you an equivalent of what the mill uh, amount is, milliliter amount is. So as an example, a tablespoon is 15 milliliter. So if I need 24 milliliters of this to do my three gallon spray, then what I do is I take a tablespoon plus um, almost two, pretty close to two uh, teaspoons. So it's gonna be like um, a tablespoon and two teaspoons will give me right about there. I'll do the last, I'll do the teaspoons, kind of a scant teaspoon because it's technically 24, not, not 25. Uh, and that would give me uh, what I would need for both the FPJ and the uh, vinegar. So the first thing I would do is get my tablespoon. And then uh, I'm gonna make sure I get this kind of cleaned off so I don't drip too much of a mess here. What does that smell like to you? <laughs> it smells green. Green. 
Okay, so and we're going to put in, and the last teaspoon we'll put in kind of scant, and that's approximately 24. And that's all for the FPJ. Let me just rinse this guy off. Cover this guy back up so I don't forget it. And we'll just set that guy aside. In this case, okay, we're going to do the same thing. It's exact same measurement. It'll be a tablespoon. And then two teaspoons. Last one being kind of scant. Right, you over dripped. Yeah, I'll make it even a little more scant. So you over dripped again. I really got scant that time. <laughs> I really cheaped out on the last one, but that's okay. It's close enough. When in doubt, you can always put a little more water in your sprayer. Okay, so now what I got going here is is I want to do this at a one to fifteen hundred dilution ratio. So I'm going to use my handy dandy app and I'm going to say I want to go 1500 and I'm going to put in I know that a um, three gallons because I've done this enough as 11,355 of dilution or excuse me of diluted solution um, so I need seven and a half uh, milliliters which conveniently would be a teaspoon and a half that's my stuff. And I want to put in a teaspoon. And then a half a teaspoon. And I'm going to go scant as I can on that. And that is my maintenance solution. That is all I'm going to be adding to three gallons in a spray. Plus this. Plus this, which the last thing I want to do, I've got to rinse off my measuring things here. Now it smells like vinegar. Mm -hmm. Now it smells like vinegar. <laughs> okay, our LAB that we're going to need is going to be at a 1 to 1,000 dilution, which means I can use my handy dandy thing again here. And I need 11, a little over 11, about 11 and a third. So that would be, uh, let's see, two teaspoons and a quarter teaspoon. Two and a quarter teaspoons, roughly, for my LAB. Does that have to be stirred up? Since no, it doesn't. The sediment <laughs> in the bottom settles out, and it's not going to matter if it floats up a little bit. But, it, you know, it, it, it's just basically sediment, and it, it's not... I mean, the only thing harm could be that it, it, it might plug a sprayer, but it doesn't harm using it. Um, so I wanted to do two because I need and a quarter. That's the LAB. Now, one of the things uh, folks need to notice is, is uh, when we're storing these solutions like FPJ or LAB, we're putting a breathable thing over the top. In this case, it's a paper towel, but if you had, you know, a type of cloth or something of that nature, that would work. Uh, it's important not to put a solid lid on these guys. Uh, because they are living solutions. Even in the fridge, they, they will respire a little bit, but they're mostly dormant. There's not a lot of activity going on, but it's important to keep that open. It's not, not important for the OHN. Matter of fact, for OHN, what you want is you want a good solid lid on OHN because this is a, a tincture of a whole bunch of um, antipathogenic type herbs like garlic, angelica, cinnamon, and licorice and um, 
uh, ginger, um, those sorts of things. And that is uh, something when you have a tincture, it, it can evaporate. So you want to keep it um, sealed as well. I typically don't mix up too much of the OHN except what I'm going to be needing over the next um, maybe month or so. Um, not, I'm trying not to look too much forward on that. So going back and looking at these guys, this is your maintenance solution. This is all the LAB you're putting in three gallons. This, it's, it's the, you know, think small, you know, and don't overdo it. That's the key thing. It's like you're trying to nudge things, you're trying to move things in a gentle way. And this is uh, gonna be giving, when sprayed on to the leaves, kind of giving them a boost of a biostimulant, um, antipathogenic, as well as the vinegar and very dilute amount helps with getting this stuff into the leaf itself. And the LAB will be on the surface and will also somewhat, you know, be transported by the material somewhat into the leaf itself, but mostly it's a surface type thing to outcompete. So there's a little bit of sugar in here with the FPJ, which is a little bit of a little bit of food for the LAB. So the whole point on the LAB is you're trying to use it to kind of outcompete on the surface of the leaves. So next step is we take this out and we spray. Okay. This is a, our three gallon, actually it's a four gallon backpack sprayer, but I only put three gallons in it. Um, I've got two in here so far, and what I'm gonna do is, is uh, add the extra mixture in here, and then using uh, the power of filling up uh, the rest of the last gallon uh, will give a good mix. So I'm gonna pour all this in. And I, actually, I'm gonna try to rinse it out. I don't want any left in the jar itself. And then we're going to put the LAB in. That's the last thing. And do the same thing there. Just kind of mix it. This stuff doesn't hurt you. That's why I can put my hand in there. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, so then the last thing I'm going to do is fill this up to three gallons. Give it a good shake. Let's do it right now, actually. So it's kind of mixed up pretty good. And we're going to fill it to three gallons. We've got one more gallon to go. Okay, this is three gallons of mix. And when you look at it, you go, well, I don't see anything. It looks a little amber, but that's about it. Or it's like a dirty backpack sprayer. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is all ready to apply. And when you apply this material, the best time to do it is um, on like today we're partly cloudy and we're at about uh, going on six o'clock the sun's gonna set at about eight so we're a couple hours before actual sunset itself it's not a hot day today uh, if it was summertime I'd probably do it a little later maybe closer to about an hour before sunset uh, because the idea is what you're trying to do is uh, get it and get it coated on your plant that you're doing and that nighttime the stomatas and things of the plant's respiration will change from what it is during the day and things will be uh, an easier transit into the plant itself. Also too, uh, UV isn't so great for biologic stuff so with low UV levels the stuff has a chance to acclimate and uh, get itself situated in the plant and it's just it's just you get a better result. So always do it you know when you're near the end of the day uh, is the best time to give these guys a spray. So when you mixed it up in the kitchen, you had to do it to, today. You can't store the mixtures. Actually, the... you could if, if, like, you mixed it up and and you say, oh, shoot, starting to rain. I can't do it today. You could put it in the fridge with, you know, a paper towel over the top. And it'll keep for a day or so, you know. But... Um, 
not yeah, long term storage. You, you don't know, it's not a long term storage thing. So, like, you know, if you got messed up or something came up, it's not like you got to throw it away. Um, and I always, like I said, I always try to mix the LAB separately and last uh, to make sure I've got it in a good dilution. Just because the LAB is the more probably biologically active stuff. So, um, I don't want that starting to feed on the sugars and the FPJ and things of that nature before um, I have a chance to get it on to the uh, plant itself. So that last step is just spray this tree and it's a dwarf tree. So I'll use probably the full three gallons to, to spray the thing because I'm gonna wanna make sure I coat from top um, all the way through. And um, like I said, we wanna do this on a 10 day rotation roughly so we'll, you know, today is the 2nd of May, so we'll do it again, you know, somewhere around the middle of the month and just kind of do this uh, several times until, you know, we get through this period of time, um, probably like around early July. Tree looks a lot better right now than it did last year. Oh yeah, it does tremendously. Um, the JMS has helped quite a bit. Right now, we, we've got a, uh, a little bit of a raggy look on the underneath of it because we've got some daffodils in there. I'm kind of waiting for them to die back. Uh, but in a couple of weeks, what I'm going to do is come in with a scythe and just chop and drop the stuff underneath it. We're leaving a mulch around the drip line of the tree itself, and that's tremendously helped. I'm still applying JMS twice a month. Uh, before bud break, I did it uh, It's about a, on a five-day rotation. I did it four times. Uh, to get it, you know, really juiced up. But then um, what I'm going to be doing is hitting it twice a month now for the rest of the season. And the soil underneath has changed dramatically. I mean, these daffodils last year uh, were nearly dead. Yeah, and, they were uh, really spotty. They were really came back with a, you know, just a roar. And the tree bloomed tremendously. It had more blossoms on it than, it, than it's had in years. Even after we pruned it, it yeah. still looked fuller. Yeah. So we... This is just an extra preventative. We want to get ahead of that rust and see if we can, you know, knock it back. This is the fun part where an old guy has to put on, you know, a backpack sprayer that weighs, oh, I don't know, what's that about? Eight, eight pounds a gallon, something like that. So 25, 30 pounds. And if you can get a get a get a sprayer that has a good hip belt, because it's just like a backpack, you know, when you're backpacking, you want it on your hips and not your shoulders. Let's see, did I do that? Oh yeah, I got messed up. There we go. Now you can see what I'm doing is I'm really coating this. I want these guys to, you know, just about be to the point where the stuff is dripping off. And it doesn't matter if it blows back a little bit on you. It's all good stuff. There's nothing harmful in this. But if you feel a little uncomfortable, you, you might want to wear eye protection, but that's only just to kind of prevent it from getting on you here. Some of these things are a little tall, but I just want to make sure I get it all. And what's amazing about this year is I see absolutely no rust on this thing so far. And usually it starts to show up about now, as soon as the 
blossoms are finished. I'm gonna make sure I get it in the other direction of the wind here. Okay, we got the tree sprayed. Actually, I had about a half gallon left, so I kind of hit the roses around here too. Kind of give them a little boost since the deer have been nibbling on them. Um, but uh, we, got the, we got it completely coated, and I didn't see any rust on there at all. As a matter of fact, what I saw something that I have not seen on this tree ever, and, and that it's actually setting fruit, and it's not supposed to. Now I'm gonna assume it's going to abort the fruit at some point, but... Uh, We've got some pictures of just little itty bitty crab apples starting on the thing. It's pretty wild. It's never done that. This tree's been here for what, 10, 15 years? Um, Probably 15 years. At least. And I mean, it's a dwarf. It's on a dwarf stock, so it's, it's never going to be I mean, even taller than that. But uh, it was healthy enough this spring that it actually set fruit. So I think we're on a good track here. And so we'll, uh, you know, keep on the rotation on this and we'll see if we're successful in keeping the rust off of it and uh, encouraging the growth. So thanks a lot for watching and I hope uh, there's some good tips in here on how to use these uh, KNF solutions, at least to how we're applying them here on the farm. And uh, thanks for watching today and as always stay safe and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.